Hello friends, this video on introduction to Euclid's Geometry Part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's understand these terms. So Euclid's definition, axioms, postulates and theorem. Let's understand what are these terms. Okay. See, if you talk about different civilization, as I told that Indian civilization, Indus Valley civilization, Greek simulation, the geometry was developed. But these Greek mathematicians of the Euclid's time, the Euclid's time is almost 3000 BC time, because that was the time the book was written. So they thought of geometry as an abstract model of the world they live in. So let me write here as it's a very important statement. So they thought of geometry as abstract model. Of world we lived in. So in fact, geometry is more to understand the abstract world. And if you see world around us, if you see the things around us, you will get books, or walls, trees, fruits, stuff like that. And all these geometrical terms which we use, you'll find in these objects. For example, if you talk about point. Anything is a point, right? This is a point, this is a point. All these are points. Talk about line. This is a line. This, this is a line. This is a line. Right? See line. Talk about plane. This is a plane in the book. This is one plane here. This is one plane. Okay? So if you see whole thing, this will be one plane. This is again a plane. So these people, this the Greek mathematicians of the Euclidean time, they thought of geometry as the abstract model of the world they lived in. So the definitions, I'm talking about definitions now. So they gave, they defined a lot of objects, right? So for example, they defined solid. Because around us we have solid. They say solid is something which has shape, size, and position. Orange is a solid because orange has a shape, orange has a size, orange has a position. It can be moved from one place to another. That is the definition for it. It can move. So you can move orange from one place to another. You can move a tree from one place to another. You can move a room from one place to another. You can move a book from one place to another. Its boundaries are called surface. So these is the boundary. So they have defined a new term called surface now. That is nothing but boundary of solids. Okay. So these surface can be curved or can be straight. This is a straight surface. This is a curved surface. Curved surface. This is a straight surface. And these, this, I mean, these are surfaces, and the boundary of these surfaces are called lines. So, if you see the boundary of this surface, this is this line, this one line, one line. This is one line. This is one line. So they define a new term called line. Line is what? Boundary of surface. Right? Same thing, a line can be a straight line, curved line, this line, this line is a curved line and this line is a straight line. And if you see these lines, these lines end in a point. If I am thinking of a line from, let's suppose, here to here, right? here to here, let's suppose. So it has the starting point, it has the ending point. So they defined a term called point. Right? End points. So line, I mean, lot of points will make a line, lot of lines will make a surface, and lot of surface will make a solid. So if you see actually the solid, 
is three dimensional. The moment uh, I go down, so solid has a surface. Surface is a two dimensional. Surface has lines. Line is one dimension. And point, there is no dimension, zero dimension. So I'm going down each step, I'm losing one dimension. And these are definitions because uh, things around us ha are ha things around us are solids. They have surface, they have lines, they have points. So all these are definitions which are created by Euclid. Euclid defined this. Euclid summarized these statements as definition. Right? He defined what is point, what is line, what is surface, what is straight line, what is curved line, etc. So we'll discuss about these definitions in detail. Just understand that Euclid defined something or you could summarize these statements as definitions. Okay. These are definitions because for us, if I just draw something like this, this is a point, this is a line, we don't know, right? You have to define it. The moment I see this, I can say this is a line because I know that a lot of points will make a line. The moment I see this, I can say it is a surface, right? The moment I see this, I can say it is a solid. Because this definition of these is all in my mind. But somebody has to create a definition. Who, who told that this means a line, this means a surface, this means a, this means a line, this means a point, this means a uh, solid. It was Euclid who defined this. Because see, these are the basic building blocks. For example, when you see your body, you have eyes, right? You have, let's suppose this is an eye, this is a nose, hairs. But these terms are given by someone, right? Why it is called hairs? There is no answer. Somebody defined it. Same thing. Why it is called point? Euclid defined it. Why it is called line? Euclid defined it. Because these are the basic building block of geometry. Because using these, we will try to understand the geometry all the more. We will try to relate the geometry with algebra and we will try to do a lot more with geometry, right? Same thing. Only when you know this is hair, this is eye, this is nose, this is heart, you can actually go more deep into biology and try to give names to different kind of cells, bacteria, and then you can understand which bacteria is causing what, which medicine is used for what, and you can get, you can be advanced in the medical science. Same thing here. To be advanced in the geometry, you should have, you have to define the basic building blocks. And that's what Euclid did. He defined the basic things in this geometrical world. He defined points, lines, surface, solids, stuff like that. Okay. So once he has defined these, once he has defined these, Euclid assumed that, he assumed that certain properties cannot be proved. So he assumed that certain things cannot be proved. And these assumptions, he called it as obvious universal And these obvious universal truth actually he divided into two parts and that is axioms and postulates. Let's study about this in detail now. So he divided this universal obvious truth into two parts. Right? One was axioms, postulates. Both are obvious universal truth. The difference is that the axiom is common notation. It is common, common to any discipline. And postulates are specific to geometry. Let me give you an example. If I say that a statement that whole is greater part. So what do you think? This statement is common to any discipline or is common only to geometry. Let's see. Take a pizza, big pizza, right? And, it, and in another case, you take a small pizza. Pizza pie. Right? So in this case, you have a big pizza, small pizza. Which one is bigger? Obviously this one, right? Because it's whole. This is a part. Or let's take apple. Let's take an apple and cut it. 
So in that case also, you'll see that the bigger apple is bigger than the partial apple. So this is true in any discipline. You talk about any discipline, the statement is true. So this is axiom. Let's take one example of postulate. Example, diameter divides circle into equal part. This is also true, right? You draw a circle, you draw a diameter, you'll see that it divides. This is common, this is obvious. Is this obvious? This thing? No, it is not. Because if you actually draw a diameter to check, but this is not obvious. If I tell to someone that the uh, diameter will divide the circle into two halves. This is not obvious. So this is actually a theorem. We'll talk about theorem. Let me take, take one example of postulate. If I say that you can draw a circle with one center and radius. What do you think? Is it obvious? Yes, it is obvious. If I have a center and if I have a, if I have a center and if I have a radius, I can draw a circle. That is the definition of circle. A circle can be drawn with the center and a radius. So this is postulate. I mean, this is postulate. Okay, and this is specific only to geometry. A triangle has three sides. This is postulate, specific only to geometry. Okay, and these theorems. That is axiom and postulates. So we talk about theorem. Theorems are the statement which are proved using definitions, axioms, and postulates. We'll cover these in detail once again. Let's understand theorems are statements which are proved using definition, axioms, and postulates. Or sometimes using previously previous previously proved theorems as well. And some deductive reasoning. Okay. For example, a diameter divide circle into two equal parts, you can actually prove it. This is a theorem. Okay, so that is definition, axioms, postulate, and theorem. Okay, if you want, I can write a definition of theorem. So let me write here theorems are statements which are proved. using definitions, axioms, previously proved theorems and deductive reasoning. Okay, so this is theorem. Sure. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot.